Hi, I'm George Whipple. Welcome to Employment Law This Week. This special edition comes from Epstein Becker Green's annual workforce management conference held in Lower Manhattan in fantastic New York City. This is a conference I've attended for decades to get an update on what's going on in employment and labor law. Let's check in with some of the Epstein Becker Green lawyers and see what they think the big issues in 2023 are. 2023 was possibly the craziest year ever when it comes to non-compete and trade secret law. On the federal side, the FTC announced a rule that would ban non-competes nationwide. Then in the summer, the NLRB got in on the act and the general counsel issued guidance to the regional directors to focus their attention on employers' use of non-compete agreements. On the state side, Minnesota banned non-competes statewide, being the first state to do so in over 100 years. More recently, the New York legislature passed a bill that would ban non-competes statewide. I think the environment is certainly leaning towards limiting the enforceability of non-competes nationwide. The EEOC just issued its draft strategic enforcement plan for the years 2024 to 2028. And one of the key focuses is um, protecting individuals who are in more vulnerable populations. One of those that they highlighted are individuals who have mental health disabilities. So employers should ensure that they have processes in place when an employee comes forward with any type of accommodation request to ensure that managers know to appropriately refer that to the HR department or benefits department. One of the big changes was Secure 2.0, which really kind of expanded retirement health plan benefits. There's been a lot of discussion for the past several years about Americans not having enough money to save for retirement. And even if they save, not understanding how to handle lump sum distributions. And so Secure 2.0, open the access to long-term part-time employees who generally would have been restricted from participating in these plans and saving for retirement. We saw the enactment of the Pregnant Workers Fairness Act, which really changed the landscape on pregnancy accommodations in the workplace. We also have the enactment of the Pump Act, um, which addresses uh, and, and requires uh, employers to make lactation accommodations available in the workplace on a federal level. And then the other really huge change we saw was the board's decision in Cycle. It really changed the standard by which the National Labor Relations Board is going to evaluate whether a work rule or policy is lawful. One of the most significant, if not the most significant thing in 2023 was the uh, prevalence of strikes in the workforce and the attitudinal changes of workers and society in general towards unions. The other big area for activity for the NLRB in 2023 was in a range of issues that take place outside of unionized environments. The board is going on both cylinders, I would say. It's going on the union side and it is going in the non-union area. That means employers who are in typically non-union environments should be concerned about their employment policies and whether or not they are um, in compliance with the National Labor Relations Act. Um, that also means that employers should be aware that employees um, who are engaging in the types of protected concerted activity that is protected by the National Labor Relations Act um, have their rights respected. We continue in the cybersecurity space to see supply chain risk where businesses uh, have their data compromised as a result of cyber attacks on their vendors. The second big trend a 2023 is artificial intelligence and um, the use of artificial intelligence as a means to, um, to deploy cyber attacks. AI is in the workplace, whether employers are making a conscious decision to use tools for employment decision making, or their employees are using ChatGPT and other generative AI tools. It's really important to get a handle on what types of tools are being utilized by the workforce or on the workforce, conduct an audit of those tools, and then determine whether you have any specific compliance obligations with respect to your use of those tools. We used to talk about the future of work in 2019, and then in the last four years, we've lived it on steroids. In the first 50 years of the firm's experience, the firm has developed a set of core values that have been critical to its success. And as we look forward, as we plan for the, the next 50 years, we look forward to continuing to live by those core values, providing client service excellence, 
supporting our colleagues, doing what's necessary to help our clients solve the problems that they face in their workplace. And that's it for this year. From Epstein Becker Green's annual Workforce Management Conference in beautiful Lower Manhattan in New York City. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next year.